Hey friends, this is Joseph Maynard. So what I want to do in this video is I want to talk about the issue of obsession. And this is something that I've dealt with. I see, I see it's like an issue, it's like a theme that just keeps coming up over and over again. And it has pros and cons. So let's talk about obsession. Let's talk about how how to think about this issue maybe differently, you know, how this issue factors into your life maybe or people that you know, right? Because our jobs too is to help people that we know that have problems that we know that we could do something that could help them and to also take influence from people who have things that we don't have and to open our ears and listen to what they have, right? So there's there's a give and take, there's a collaboration, right, that we want that we're looking for. Um but this issue of obsession, it has pros and cons. And I'm going to start this discussion with my own life. And then by extension, I might reference other people indirectly, right? Because I don't want to embarrass anybody. But, um, you know, I've come into contact with uh, people that are really strong in being obsessive and people who are the opposite. Right. And so then the question is, is sort of like an uh, Aristotelian uh, problem now. Like, what's the middle way between like the obsessive and the person who doesn't give a shit? Right. Because that's what you really want. Right. See, the obsessive is weighed down in a kind of way, which can be good. It can be bad. It just depends. Right. You can think of many ways that somebody who's weighed down, that's a benefit, right? Wow, they know a lot about this very specific niche or um, they have this very specific skill. Maybe they're really good at basketball, like Michael Jordan, right? Like, so we can see how like being weighed down can be great. But also think about the person who is like, they're, they're weighed down, but the way that they're weighed down doesn't benefit their life. In other words, like they're, they're like completely obsessed with like some frivolous thing, right? Like maybe like somebody who has like Asperger's or somebody who uh, just gets lost and they, they just get lost on one thing at a time, but it's just like they, they don't know how to bob and weave, right? They got to learn how to bob and weave. Like, you know, like you might get lost in uh, video games, for example, or maybe you get lost in psychedelics or you get lost in some some concern that you have in your life where you just can't, and the way that you know, Okay, so th that we're all speaking the same language here. The way that you know that you're obsessed with something is when you can't drop it, right? You may have an army of people behind you telling you, dude, just drop it. Just drop it. For the love of God, just drop it and you can't. This is how you know that you're obsessed. So there are pros and cons to obsession. And actually, uh, George Leonard in this book, Mastery, which you can get on Audible too if you want to get the uh, uh, vocal version of this or the audio book, um, he talks about the obsessive and the pros and cons of the obsessive. And the reason why I made this video, or I'm making this video, I made in the past tense, I'm making uh, present progressive tense, uh, is because I'm dealing with this right now in myself and in others that I'm relating with. This issue of obsession. This has pros and cons. And so there's another book here that's important for you guys to look at regarding this issue. It's a book by, um, just give me a second while I do my research that I should have done before this video. It's a book by Keller and Papazon called The One Thing. It's got this beautiful domino cover, right? Which is kind of cool. The one domino. 
Uh, I don't know if you guys have ever played dominoes, but dominoes is fucking fun, right? It's a really fun game. Uh, I played that a lot in college, and uh, we would bet on that like poker. We would play poker as well, and we would play chess and many other things like that. But uh, dominoes, I remember having a great time with. But yeah, the one thing. So it's this idea that, right, you, you should like focus on one thing. And what I want to tell you is that this has major pros and cons. It just depends. It depends on the situation. It depends on the person. It depends on strengths and weaknesses. So, for example, sometimes it's really, really useful to focus on one thing. So, for example, if your life is a mess, realizing that, like, like focusing all your energy on habit, formation and then secondarily on career that would be ideal for you right so strategically you can say man if i could take a deep dive into habit formation and a deep dive into career right that will solve like that's like the 20 percent of the action that will solve 80 percent of my problems so you'll hit the 80 20 rule and you'll you'll cash in right like cha-ching so sometimes being able to focus is amazing the great generals, right? The great, the great uh, theorists, the great uh, teachers of you have been people who have been extremely good at focusing. And so we almost uh, sort of like overly glorify the obsessive. Like you should focus on one thing. You should find the one thing that you should focus on in your life and just like nail that in, hammer that in. But this has pros and cons. And, um, you know, sort of like the, if you and I were, were in a bar together and I were giving you, you're like, give me the, give me like the one thing that you could tell me that would be the, the solution to this. I would say, you know, learn how to bob and weave. Some of the smartest people that I've ever seen are people that don't get hung up. They're not hung up people. Right? They know how to like pick things up and put things down. So, yeah, they can use anything. They'll use anything, right? That's that's worthwhile, but then once the once the, once the use goes out, you know, it's like they move on to something else. So they're, they they move from like stage blue to stage orange. So stage blue tends to want to find the foundation for everything and to stick to those fundamentals. Whereas stage orange tends to like to, to use the best that is presented at the time. So see, stage orange is much less um, uh, obsessive than stage blue. So if you, if you want to work on your obsession problem, like moving from stage blue to stage orange is actually huge for you. Even if you have to reintegrate stage orange. Don't just assume that just because you're at, you know, resonating with stage green that you've done everything you can to reintegrate stage orange. Because I'm living that, right? Reintegrating stage orange. And I'll do a video soon on the stage orange sort of values of living in the United States, how the United States is very centered on stage orange. But, you know, I don't want to get into that. But the issue is how to do obsession without having obsession do you. How do you take, a, how do you take deep dives without being somebody where the deep dives end up doing you. So for example, right, I see this in myself and I see this in other people. And, you know, it's kind of like, an, like a high-functioning um, autism thing, like Asperger's. I think I might have a little bit of high-functioning um, autism. So I can see this in myself sometimes. And also, certain drugs will magnify this. So for example... In my experience, weed and uppers, okay, like, 
I mean, I shouldn't say uppers. Let's just be fucking frank. Like speed, methamphetamine, crystal meth, right? You know, the tweaker, right? What is the tweaker? The tweaker is the person who's like, um, they're like, they're zoomed, they're so far zoomed into something, but then there are like pros and cons to that, right? So they can spend like, you know, lots of people who do crystal meth, you know, they might be really, really good at like one thing, like working on motorcycles, you know? And they, and they just tweak out, they tweak out on one particular thing, see? And, but that has pros and cons because they're not working on, they're not able to bob and weave. See, what you need to be able to do is you need to be able to bob and weave, especially if you're in a stage orange, complicated environment where things are changing. Like, so for example, if you're in fucking Colombia and you have one specific job, your job is to like make cocaine, right? And so you just do cocaine all the time. That's not going to be bad for you. That's not going to impact your career. But if you're living in the United States, well, we're in a stage orange society where, you know, you have to be flexible and you have to have a certain kind of persona and you have to be clean and have a professional aspect to yourself and be able to, to think clearly and strategically and to be able to move your ball forward in a kind of, um, you know, with like self-reliance um, and self-discipline, right? You're not going to be able to like be on any kind of hard drug or have any kind of serious mental illness and be able to do that. You wonder why we have so many homeless people here, right? It's because stage orange is actually a relatively high spiral stage. And the United States is centered around stage orange. See, stage orange requires having your wits about you, right? So yeah, I would say, cool man, you know, you've, you've discovered the the beauty of zeroing in, narrowing down, or going down a rabbit hole, or taking a deep dive into something. But you also know, you also need to know how to like bob and weave and like shift gears and be flexible and move on the fly and readjust in the spur of the moment. Like realize when, when like learning how to drop something, right? See, this is, it. this is it right now. So this is all by way of introduction, guys. What I'm going to do in the rest of this video is I'm going to teach you guys how to be able to drop, right? Pick up and drop. See, this is this whole thing. And this is very hard to teach. It's very, very, very hard to teach. But how to be able to pick something up and put it down. Pick something up and put it down. So that you can take deep dives, but not let the deep dive do you where all you're doing is you're like tweaking out in these deep dives and you can't drop things reasonably, right? There comes a point where it's just like, move on, man. What are you doing? Like th th this is an issue that comes up over and over again. Don't lie, right? You deal this with yourself and you deal this with all, everybody that you come into contact with. It's just like, you know, like being able to drop something, that, this isn't a God-given uh, skill. This is something that's just like, Number one, you have to become aware of the issue, right? Okay, so that's what I'm doing in this video as I've raised the issue of obsession. And then two, you have to be able to have some kind of a... Um, uh, ability to think that you can make a decision as to change things. Uh, so a certain kind of a spirituality about what's available to you to do and an entitlement on some level. And then you have to have a, uh, a practically strategic plan of action about what to do when this issue rises. So you have to have some kind of like, what do you do? Do you tell yourself an affirmation? Well, maybe what you say to yourself is like, I can drop this right now. What do I need to do to like change my focus? It's like, have you guys ever had like the hiccups real bad? And you're like, well, how do I get rid of this? Or have you ever had like a song stuck in your head? It's called an earworm, right? You have a song stuck in your head and it's like, well, how do I get rid of this? It's the same thing like with, with thoughts sometimes, with obsession. It's just like you can't drop it. You don't want to drop it. So first and foremost, you have to want to drop it. Like when you have this like, you can think of an obsession as like a thought worm. It's not an earworm. It's a thought worm, right? 
that it's just like it's just like you can't drop it, right? It's like a hiccup. It's a thought hiccup, hiccups, where you're like, I want to stop doing this, but I can't. God damn it, I can't. It's an intellectual earworm, right? Or an intellectual hiccup, or an intellectual, um, like something that's dominating you, right? Where you're just like focused on something and you don't even realize that you don't want to be focused on it. This is the, the, the Asperger's problem. People who have Asperger's or people who, who uh, don't even realize that this can be a problem, right? So it's either people who lack social awareness, self-awareness, or they're like low consciousness where they don't realize like, like they're not like at stage mauve, right? Which is a very, 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 very high spiral stage. But even stage orange is very pragmatist, right? They don't, they don't realize that, you know, they, nobody ever taught them how to like pick things up and put things down, pick things up and put things down, move from one thing to another. Like no need here, need, no need, need, no need. The ability to be able to like do the best thing without getting caught up. See, this is what obsession does to you is it gets you caught up and then you get distracted, right? So I would say this, you know, um, there are pros and cons to marijuana. I would say one of the things about um, at least during your work hours, right, you shouldn't be smoking weed. I would say one of the worst mistakes you're making is during your work hours is smoking weed. Because weed has a tendency to put you in this like um, narrow-minded thing where like you can focus on one thing and, and really, really intensely. And that goes for the harder drugs as well. But weed don't, and alcohol too, right? The problem with alcohol is that alcohol puts you entirely in line with your passion. And your passion isn't necessarily the best guide for you, right? You need this like, you can realize that like your passion gets you into, there are pros and cons to following your passion. The hedonist, right? Like following your passion has pros and cons. So, you know, ditto for alcohol. So weed and alcohol limit those. And then also realize too, that if you have a kind of a psychological reason why you, you uh, tend to have this tunnel vision or this obsession mentality um, that's not drug oriented, like, you know, speed, methamphetamine, if you're doing that or if you're doing cocaine or if you're doing um, lots and lots of psychedelics, you can also put yourself in a tunnel vision as well. So like during your work hours, you know, you, you should be, you should be uh, clean and sober. And even, you know, the problem with caffeine, caffeine can become a crutch too. And caffeine, it, it activates lots and lots of things too, right? So, you know, get to the point where you're not using food, sugar, caffeine, or anything from your like eight to five, right? Work hour zone. Try to be like clean. You know, one of the things I learned when I went to India is uh, I was clean when I was there, like entirely. And uh, I had so much energy and I was so flexible, like I wasn't so caught up. So, you know, don't underestimate how ideas, drugs, food, distractions, all this other bullshit is not only sapping your energy, but it's like, it's distracting you, right? And so, yeah, it, it is important to be able to like, uh, take deep dives, but it's also important to be able to bob and weave and to move, right? To be able to um, um, drop something. So let me explain this in the, the, the last uh, 10 minutes of this video. Let me explain this issue of being able to drop something. This is like the practice aspect of this. And let me explain, I'm gonna try to, try to give you guys a method for to be able to spot the issue, react to the issue, and resolve the issue. 
So it's a lot like resolving a hiccup. Resolving an obsession is a lot like resolving a hiccup. So just give me one second. Hey friends, this is Joseph. So the first thing I want you guys to realize is that there is no right answer. There is no right advice as to these things. Um, you're going to have to decide for yourself what feels right and what is right. But what I'm going to do in this video is I'm just going to give you guys a little bit of an insight from my own perspective about how the pros and cons of obsession and then how to deal with it. So on some level, right, the strategist is obsessive. The thinker, right, is obsessive. The planner, the project creator is an obsessive, right? So obsession is really just one side of a duality. So there's the duality between the obsessive and the person who doesn't give a shit. Person who doesn't give a shit, they just live in the spur of the moment. Right. They're on one side and then the, the obsessive is on the other. And just as Aristotle understood, there's a, there's a beautiful middle way between these two, right, that you want to find, which is virtue. It's like, how do you use... Uh, how do you pick things up and then use them and then put them down when they're no longer useful, right? That requires a kind of judgment that's really difficult, and, but it's necessary in a competitive world where we're competing for resources and we want to act smartly. I mean, unless you're being taken care of by somebody where you can just do what you want, you know, you have to be like on the top of your game, especially in a stage orange environment like the United States. You have to be on, you have to be the best, right? You have to be smart. And so this requires a savviness of being able to put things, pick things up and put things down. Like be careful with your absolutes. Be careful with your strong interests, right? Like you can very easily uh, have survival problems in an environment that really uh, values what's good in the moment, what's good in practice, what's good right now, the right fit for right now. See, the problem with taking a deep dive is it's almost like you go away. Every time you focus, right, there's something that gets excluded. So it's not like focusing isn't your problem. It's being able to focus and then, and then jump back into the here and now and then focus and then jump back into the here and now and then focus and jump back into the here and now. But the problem with this is I don't know whether it's philosophical buy-in or personality buy-in or existential buy-in or just it is the way that it is buy-in, but some of us have a hard time dropping something. It's like when we pick something up, you pick up like a, you pick up a Wordsworth poem and now you're like, your whole life has to be like in, you become an expert on Wordsworth, right? Or like Michael Jordan, you pick up a basketball and now your whole life is about being like the greatest basketball player ever, right? So you can see how this can work for you. But sometimes it can fuck you up. Like imagine you're like a, you're like a, 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 neuro, a non-neural typical person, like somebody who has like schizophrenia or something like that. And, you know, you're going off into these very personal excursions that nobody cares about that's not profitable, Right. And you don't have somebody to take care of you. Well, this is the kind of person that becomes homeless. We see these people on the street, don't we? Take a look around. These mentally ill people that you see walking around on the street, they're obsessing over something. And that's their problem. right? They, 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 their, their problem is a lack of being able to pick something up and put something down. right? They're obsessing about what's going on for them right? Instead of like even trying to learn how 
Stage Orange Society works. Ditto for you people who have autism or Asperger's. Like me, I, I think I might have Asperger's, but I don't, I don't know that for sure. But it's just like, no, you don't, you don't get out of the duty to, uh, to learn about neurotypical uh, reality. Especially if you're in a stage orange environment where you're not being taken care of and you need to take care of yourself. Like, you can be, you know, very uh, mentally ill where you're just like, go away from me. Everybody go away from me. There are pros and cons to that because, yeah, you know, every crazy person can exercise the go away from me defense. But not if you really want to be taken with credibility and have reputation as being somebody who can be worked with. And so there's a certain extent where you do need to be able to have a persona in a stage orange environment. Like you don't want to just reveal everything about yourself carte blanche, right? And you don't want to be full of shit either, right? You, you want to, to, to have reasonable boundaries. There's a great uh, channel that I've subscribed to. It's called How Communication Works. I recommend you guys check this guy out. Um, he really will help a lot of you, right? Work this balance between um, disclosure and non-disclosure in your communication. You don't want to be somebody who never tells you who they are and they just hide behind concepts. And you also don't want to be the person who's just like an open book who just tells you every, all the personal details that would embarrass anybody, right? It's just like, no, there's, there's a middle way, as Aristotle understood, right? There's a middle way there. And again, it gets back to this, the theme of this video. It's like, how do you pick up obsession, but then put it down when it's no longer pragmatically working for your life? And then if you get stuck in obsession, how do you get out of it? Well, it's like having the hiccups real bad, right? First of all, you have to resolve to stop obsessing. I mean, I've, I've literally had this issue when I've been like with myself and with others where I'm just like, stop. Please, for the love of God, stop. What can I do to help you stop? You can't stop. Now what do we do? How long is this going to go? It's just going to have to run its course. So there's got to be some kind of like life coaching strategy for you and for the person who you're working with to be able to help them stop obsessing when they're caught in this, right? It's like, it's like being captivated in a, uh, a hell realm where you can't get out of it. Sometimes it's positive. Sometimes it's negative though. Like, so like... Let's say you're you're uh, you're obsessed about um, doing something that actually benefits your life. Well, that's good. But let's say that you're obsessed about doing heroin, or some, or you're obsessed about gambling, or you're obsessed about. Uh, distracting yourself and t instead of taking right action that you know that you should do. You're obsessed about some distraction that isn't helping your life. Um, you're obsessed about finding a reason to quit something that you know is good for you. You're obsessed about something that keeps going back and forth. Right, you have this you have this indecisive problem where it's like you keep going back to something, and you're you're like you're you're like a um, you don't make any progress. It's like you have this love hate oscillation, this love hate oscillation that goes back and forth on on a particular issue. Like maybe it's like uh, whether or not you should read books or not, and you keep going back and forth on that, and you never get anywhere. 
right? You never make the decision to stop reading. You may never make the decision to start reading. And what happens is you just do this oscillation back and forth like this, right? It's like you're stuck in like this like um, uh, fence sitting kind of thing and your life doesn't go anywhere. It doesn't get any worse, but it doesn't get any better. So you see how sometimes obsession, there's pros and cons to obsession. Sure, you can become Michael Jordan, but you can also become somebody who like stagnates indefinitely. Well, keep that in mind. Okay, friends? Good topic, good discussion. Thank you, and uh, I'll talk to you soon. Take care.